You didn't even read the press release. You could have read the press release. Yeah, Did you read the press I read release? It. There's nothing going Did on. Did you read there. the press release? No. No. There okay. we go. You now even, we got you some fire. Do that for the now we got some fire. No. What's up, everybody? It's Joe Lupuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneaker Show. As always, I'm joined by my two co-hosts, my two friends to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. Rejuvenated. Are you? What? Why? I don't know. Okay. UFC 300. Oh, ele- wow. Electric Weekend. Would have thought you were in the octagon. To yep. my left, <laughs> fresh off the Paris trip, I'm Mr. Only Brendan ju- Only Only just juvenated. Okay. Not rejuvenated? No. It was a long, it was a long week. I, had a, I was a bit under the weather. I was barely sleeping, but... Abroad and under the weather. We were working. Yeah. All right. What do we got today? I'm hoping that you could explain the ins and outs of the Nike event. I'm still a little confused. I'm going to sit here, take it all in, and listen. Yes. There was a lot happening last week in Paris. Nike's big reveal for the Olympics. Nike Pegasus Premium. What looked kind of like an early Victor Wembenyama prototype concept shoe nike air what they're saying is the future of their design process ai inflected breakdancing shoes a lot of new sneakers previewed we're going to talk about drake's foot size diss to kendrick lamar and if the bar hit the mark on the brannick device or Riff not jumped in with the fact check yes going to talk about that another ae colorway yeah we some of my colleagues saying this supporters may, some of my colleagues saying this may be the best one Another great one. Uh, before we get too far into this, let's talk about the sneakers that we have on feet. Wealthy. Yeah, this. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. no, wealthy guy. Just went with Sean Weatherspoon Gazelle indoors. Saw him sitting there and said, "Hey, I haven't worn these yet." This guy was he was struggling a little bit this morning on what to wear. Yeah, sometimes I show up to the office in a pair of New Balances. Yep. Uh, you know, New Balance nine nine threes on feet, and I. Need to switch out those sneakers for something a little bit novel, but I did find these and Adidas Samba, the past colorway. I, I like these a lot. Are we going to see you in the End X Reebok, the Streets collaboration that's coming out? I am very, thank you for referencing that <laughs> shoe, Wealthy. I don't know the status of that shoe's release just yet. Mike Skinner, the Streets, they have a sneaker collaboration with Reebok and with End. I hope to be involved in the rollout. Thank you for putting that out yeah. into the universe and supporting me on that. I will, will that I will have an interview with Mike Skinner about it. I'm doing the Kith New Balance 1906. I've been wearing these so much. I tried to wear them on the podcast first, but... Beat you to it? He beat me to it. <laughs> he beat me to it. He scooped me. He Team scooped early? Me. Team early. He I, got I early. Ray Jade you? And um, I, I guess. <laughs> uh, I want those Joe Fresh goods, too. <laughs> Which ones? The other colorway, not the ones that he had. The wealthy wore the wrong colorway. No, he no the the yeah skeptical black and chrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are awesome, and it was just nice to see a a big reaction around another release for Joe. So yeah, and the rollout for that we wrote about it a little bit, but the Get Money Boys a reference to the amazing Jordan Eleven lineup back in the day. I hope people care about that kind of history. It's something we put a lot of effort into retelling people what certain references mean and i know that people yeah. who make sneakers and make campaigns for them spend a lot of time effort and money on that as well so i hope that people uh, take it all in and, and use it to, to better situate the sneakers in the yeah. rankings how was paris it was yeah it was it was hectic yeah it was nice i saw our friend arthur carr yeah. oh nice <laughs> yeah we need, we're trying to get arthur carr back yep. on the podcast yeah please let us know in the comments if that's an episode you're hotly anticipating did you see the nocta arthur carr did you see the nocta Art, did you see the read, read yeah? It. Did you see the La Nocta La Arte La Automobile collab? Working up on close, your French a little yeah, bit, up yeah, up close and personal. I did, I did. It was such a funny run in with him. I was just walking around, and then I saw this banana yellow Porsche mm. sitting on the streets of Paris, and I took a photo and sent it to him. And I was like, "Okay, we're outside, okay." Yeah. And he was nearby, and then I got to swing by the garage and check out the almost cop something. Or? Um, you know what? I was not that you're, close to you're, buying. You're a... trying to figure out how to ship it back. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank will, you. Will this yeah. fit in the carry-on? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna scoop a Ferrari, but couldn't quite figure out the freight situation. No, but always a pleasure to see our yeah. friend Arthur. Got it. Got some gear from there, so I'm, I'm doing nice. The, I'm doing the t-shirt today. There we and, go. And just to see the car out in the wild, and that was, I guess, Virgil's Porsche before. I guess oh, it's okay. kind of the canary yellow palette that he was fond of. So nice, nice times. 
And some news came out of there. Want to get right to the yeah. Paris oh, trip? I think we should. Yeah. I'm, should we? I, I feel like some other smaller. Th I mean, the no, Kendrick thing. Let's hop, no, <laughs> no we should, keep let's, going. Let's hop right into it. Okay. Yeah, if we're cool. talking about it. Okay. What do you want to talk about? The preview. I think the biggest yeah. thing kind of was what I would say is that from people who weren't there, and maybe you could clarify this, kind of like a little bit of confusion prototype versus mm -hmm. kind of like signature. Are these shoes going to be made? Are yeah. the sneakers going to be made? But what can you say basically about the prototypes? And then we'll get into this uh, skate shoe that it seems like was the big winner of the week. To me, the Nike Pegasus Premium was the coolest actual real life so. sneaker that was on display there. Mm -hmm. But backing it up a little bit, this is Nike's on-air event in Paris last week. This was a huge press blitz ahead of the Olympics, which will mm -hmm. be in Paris and France this summer. As per usual, Nike has a lot of product tied to that. Yeah. A lot of things to say about how they outfit the best athletes in the world with the best innovations in sportswear. And so they had on display a handful of new shoes, pieces of apparel as well, kits and things like that. Sport specific for the most part. Yes, totally. Yeah. Running shoes, skating shoes, breakdancing shoes. I and think then that shoe was cool. It's kind of like the antithesis a little bit of breakdancing. The I, Nike Jam breakdancing shoe. Yeah, I think the shoe's cool. Yeah. Like there's like the reverse swoosh. Yeah. Not a la Travis, but just like if you're inverted upside down. I yeah, like. I like that design detail on there a lot. But what was the grand finale of the weekend was definitely the unveil of the Nike AIR project. And this is Athlete Imagined Revolution. What they are pitching as the next generation of Nike Air, what the future will look like in footwear design for Nike. Very ambitious, a series of sort of signature sneaker type ideas, very much concept cars, not real shoes. We have to say this yeah. every time we talk about these designs. Yeah. I feel because, like there was a lot of confusion yeah. around that Yeah, online. Even when I saw them in person for the first time, it's like kind of a fashion show set up. Travis Scott is there, Nike CEO John Donahoe is there. Clint from Cortez is there, a lot of big names in the building. They unveil on a series of pedestals all these designs, and you're sitting in the crowd and you see them, and it's like, oh my God, we're back. And I, a, a Nike exec asked me afterwards, what do you think? And that was, that was my exact response, we're back, because I saw these designs, these things that could only be Nike, this, this type of footwear that could, even without the swoosh, live as a Nike product and generate that emotion that I feel like only Nike can do that felt like old school Nike magic in a way. But the thing is, sometimes with magic, when you go and you see it a little bit closer up, it turns out to just be sleight of hand. And that's kind of what I felt like with these products where they weren't real things. They, they weren't really, real shoes. They pulled the curtain away on the magician. These are concepts. These are 3D printed. They're, they're quite stiff. They mm -hmm. weren't letting us touch them because there were a bunch of people, but I, I was able to touch them and feel them a bit the day after. Stiff, a lot of them didn't really have places where you could put a human foot into them. Yeah, I saw some of those and it looked like the top was almost like closed off on some of them. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe if it were a fly knit material in, in, on a real shoe, mm -hmm. you could slide your foot into there. But definitely these are ideas, AI informed, athlete informed about what the future of Nike will look like from a design standpoint. I think they're beautiful, but I do think they fall short when you're going to reveal this magnificent product and this next level of what Nike mm -hmm. will be, and, th and then you realize, oh, this is, these are ideas. These aren't shoes that you, humans can wear. Do you think there's some sort of crowdsourcing and like seeing the reaction? And then if some are reacted to better than others, like they'll be put mm -hmm. in production or what? Uh, not to me. I don't, I don't think that was the, the I, goal of it. I don't think a lot of those can be put into production just from like a design standpoint. I mean, I think it it fell kind of flat mm. from an overall like you mean the AIR yes, concept it, specifically yeah like what's what's the end game of all this you you go in and I remember you went there and I, I didn't really have an idea of like what the grand unveiling of this weekend was going to be from like what's the big thing that we're going to see that everyone's going to be like oh wow right it, it wasn't clear to me either being there and we see these sort of like sculptures online and you're like okay they're sculptures, you the know. AIR shoes. Yeah, but you're like, at first, the first glance, you're just like, these aren't real sneakers. I think there was one where it was like a track spike with a high heel on the back, and you're just like, okay, that's not like a feasible product. Yeah. So I was just like, I went, in, I saw it, and I was like, okay, there's not really a clear direct, like, this is supposed to be the future of Nike. Mm. And there, the future of Air. Yeah, but there's not really a clear path forward of like, where does this lead to it seemed much more of like 
an art show mm. created to gain likes on Instagram, mm. then it felt like, like last week when we had Paul Litchfield on and you learned about how like these high level concepts are created and there has to be like some sort of inspiration and then some sort of real world application to create yeah. these things. And maybe I'm wrong, but it didn't feel like there was any real world application to these designs of like, what problems are these going to solve for the athletes? It's just like, look how crazy we can make it look. I do think that there are those real world things that they're trying to solve for in some instances. And some of that they've detailed, some of that they haven't. I mean, I was looking at the shoe on display there for Erling Holland, and the idea there was moving the airbag to the upper of the shoe so that a ball could bounce off it and really pop, oh. or if you read some of well, Nike's I mean, that, descriptions. That would, that would be illegal. I know, I know, but I'm just telling you what Nike said. I'm not... <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I'm just kind of like, eh. But making shoes that get banned is good, right? Not... I don't think so in, in that sense. Yeah. Like, if you... Like, I know they've, they've done that a lot with those sort of... um there's been controversy on like the plated yeah. running shoes, yeah. but I feel yeah. like a, a football boot that has something that like makes the ball like shoot out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like yeah. it, anyone anyone could like come up with that concept, but everyone kind of knows it's cheating. So it's like you wouldn't even yeah. try. The Elliot Kipchoge shoe, super intense looking model as they all are. I think he had some mm -hmm. feedback in the design process about connecting certain pieces along the sole so the debris wouldn't catch up into it. That's cool. I don't think it's That's fair to cool. dismiss these totally as fantasy. Mm -hmm. I think that they are designed to some extent as things that people would wear or could wear if they could be produced, but I still think we need to get closer to the actual production in order for this to be a real wow moment or a huge, huge yeah. win for Nike. Mm -hmm. But there were some sneakers that were unveiled as well. Yeah, for sure. And I think that also, I, I think an important caveat on this, and let me know if it sounds like I'm like uh, caping no. for Nike on no. any of this. But okay, even if we say Nike didn't do as much as they should have with this mm -hmm. unveil, no other sneaker brand would have been able to create a moment near that close or even have us talking about sneakers that that create this much emotion or feedback on, on anywhere near that, right? I think they're only competing against themselves. I guess, but I also like... Do I. Maybe I'm, I don't know if I'm missing it, but it, it didn't really feel that big. Yeah. Like I saw it online, but it wasn't like people were just massively blown away and there was this huge discussion about it. Like, I think yeah. because the, it may have been technology that was too advanced for kind of a casual sneaker head to yeah. be fully bought into but, it. Like I, I will say, I think maybe that was part of it. Like how it didn't feel big. It's not, to be honest, it, it's the technology would have to be kind of watered down or a big unveiling of a new shoe that, or a new iteration of a shoe a, that we were familiar totally. with that people would, totally. would, would like, you know, like the kid, do you think any of the kids are super, super excited about this AIR technology? I think it, it like you said, it, it's- I just don't think there's a clear idea of like what it what we're supposed to be excited about. Mm. And I, I feel like someone had mentioned to us that they felt like this was like the unveiling of Flyknit. And to me, it's like the total opposite of that huge unveiling of Flyknit because Flyknit was this very like tangible thing. Like here is Flyknit. Yeah. Here is a new technology. On that a pair of shoes that yes, you can buy now. That's has a yeah. utilitarian purpose and it's very clearly like whittled down and defined and you're excited to have things with fly knit on them going forward. I don't know what AIR means. Yeah. I think also we're in a zone where like, what's new, what's new? And yeah. maybe that's what they wanted to achieve by that. Yeah. Technology and, and yeah, maybe the products you can't and maybe you, hold or you even produced, mentioned but... it like, Nike has gone super futuristic mm. in the past, and then they do like the auto lacing hyper adapt shoes, but then it it doesn't really catch. Yeah. That's what I felt more of this is than actually like we created the next big thing in footwear. I will say the one thing that it felt like, and again, I was there in the moment, so it was the most consuming thing for me because I was working and trying to post a million photos of them and understand best what they were and do interviews and things like that. But to me, the one big one, was the Victor Wembenyama shoe. Mm -hmm. They had on display there in Paris a concept. Some people call it a prototype. I think that's too far to say, but this gigantic 3D printed sculpture concept car of a shoe for Victor Wembenyama, kind of alien versus predator vibes. And to me, that was the one that people were all excited about or talking about. I still don't think it's safe to say that that's a reflection of what a possible Victor Wembenyama shoe will feel like. It still feels like fantasy. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at it and it's like a basketball shoe that has some sort of like, maybe hyperposit-esque like vibes to the upper. And then mm. it has that huge air 
thing on the side. Yeah, but it looks then, like a glowing brain in that Nike orange. And it, I guess it looks cool for something that's going to like pop on Instagram. But as far as like an actual technological advancement goes, I don't know what it is or what it would be. To yeah. me, it's just like a newer version of like Jason Kidd's Zoom flights that has the big eyeball on the side where mm. I'm like, okay, it's a new version of that. But we weren't explained that there's some sort of new tech in this shoe that's going to make basketball shoes better. A lot of these look like wild 3D printed shoes. And, and I feel like Nike probably has the manufacturing capabilities to actually make 3D printed shoes. And it's mm -hmm. like, there are smaller sneaker brands which do 3D printed sneakers that that kind of look as out there as these. There's a small brand called Scry that I follow on Instagram or Zellerfeld mm -hmm. is, is making 3D printed shoes and has been for years. So it's like if these small independent labels can make things that look wild, how come Nike can't go further than just doing these sculptural stiff models on display and, and have it be something you can put on your feet? Yeah, I just think we would have been overall more excited where we, we talk about like, there's not other shoe brands that could do this besides Nike, but I just think we would have been more... Maybe I'm hypocritical since I said earlier that, and now I'm saying, but I mean, no, no, just no, no, the, no, no. I'm not, you know, I, the spectacle I, and sorry, the magic I'm not, of I'm not, it. I'm not ref referring to that. I just think that they didn't really give us anything other than an art show. Yeah. So, well, well, they did. So there were other physical, real shoes. Yeah, I mentioned it like three times. We still haven't talked well, about it. I don't it. know. I, no, 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 <laughs> you're, no. You're no. filling, you're, trust me, you're filling the audience in, but I just keep trying to bring it up. But yeah. I just want to make sure we get enough Absolutely. on the. No, Absolutely. No, sorry. I, I know there were, I mean, I know there were real shoes before that, but with the AIR thing, and I know there were like the prototype shoes that Shikari Richardson yeah. was wearing that didn't really look like real yeah they, they were real i saw no, those. they're I real but those. i mean like as far as like it seemed just more like a concept come to life than yeah. like this is two what's... gigantic airbags on top of each other a fly print upper giant um leg covering that goes all the way up to the knee kind of like the old um Kevin Ricardo Tishi air first ones <laughs> can we talk about the the actual shoes yes. the, act, the, the real Sandy? life shoes yeah. that were on deck there yeah. yeah no pun intended skate shoe based on yes the Nike PS8, yes, not based on the forthcoming PlayStation 8. This is the Nike Problem Solver 8. Anytime Nike has some clever reference in a shoe name like this, I'm already in. Mm -hmm. The name references Sandy Bodecker, yes. yep. uh, the late Sandy Bodecker, who started Nike SB and Nike. His Instagram handle was Problem Solver 8. This is a fire, new fire handle, by the way. Yeah, yep. this is a new skate shoe for the Olympics. I was actually a little bit surprised at how much people were into these when we posted them. There was a huge reaction from them. I was more into the Pegasus, which we'll talk about later. Wealthy, mm -hmm. do you like the Nike PSA? I know there's been a lot of discussion around that shoe where the skate world's a lot more fickle mm -hmm. about just accepting all these things. And I feel like this is the sort of the thing that even Sandy Bodecker talked about when starting Nike SB that if Nike wanted to create these super high performance products for skate that sometimes they wouldn't feel as organic in the skate world. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like maybe there was some like of that reaction early on to shoes like the Zoom Tray, et cetera, where like they're kind of cool to sneakerheads, but some skaters were just like, this doesn't look like a skate shoe. Sure. To me, so you can't I just like jam nike performance into yeah. a skate shoe without and I think, really considering skaters I, I think we saw that when they did the costin three mm -hmm. it was the shoe that had like the fly knit um like booty upper yeah, on it on top and it was just like a little too much of a step forward in skate shoes that didn't feel like skateboarding and that was also that era when there yeah. were all those sneakers joe nike lunar epic fly knit where they were just yeah. putting a fly knit sock yes. collar on yeah, everything they're like super hard to yeah. get on your feet yes um, so I don't know. I, I feel like I'm just like in between on it where it does look kind of cool, but then also creating a super high tech performance shoe for skating is like a little weird, but I don't know. Problem solver eight. Joe, are you into it? It's white and blue, but <laughs> so that, that, that right there, there black and red, maybe Ima but imagine the shoe in black and red. Yeah. I mean, I think the reaction that people gave it was like something that was notable it's cool i don't i don't know if this is a shoe for me but it was actually one of the ones that did you like pick it up and hold it or no, no? that one was okay. on a mannequin so you couldn't okay. really uh feel them out so is the pegasus premium like an actual performance running shoe so the nike pegasus premium like i said this was the most interesting sneaker that i saw mm -hmm. there on display i think that it's tough to say. I think a, a lot of people running Pegasus at, 
Yeah, yeah. The Pegasus is still a staple for sure running line, and I run in Pegasus a lot. A, a super bouncy, aired out version of it. I don't know. I I, I was able to try the Pegasus Premium. So you said it felt cartoonish. Feet. Yeah, it was like it was like kind of wobbly, but in a fun way. You know, mm -hmm. the the bag is intense. That's the first time Nike has ever done a sculpted airbag like that, where the airbag in the middle of it, sandwiched between React X Foam and Zoom X Foam, but it feels like a carbon fiber plate in in a airbag form. Well, I've definitely f not. With, I mean, obviously I haven't worn those, but I've yeah. definitely like uh, echoed that sentiment sometimes with some of the Stone Island New Balance uh, like running shoes that they've made, where they have like that's the new. What's that model? Uh, RC Elite. Yeah, and they have a carbon fiber plate in it, and they have this super bouncy foam on it, and you try to walk around in it, and yeah. at first it just like feels like you're unstable. Besides the event, what was going on? Any like stories about? discussions in Paris. I'm sure you got some info. Any models that people were talking about or that you saw even like attendees wearing that was like notable or anything like that? I mean, Futura was there. He had on the friends and family Nike SB Dunk. How do those the, look? The red pair, right? Those look wild, yeah. yeah. I I think I like those better than the GR pair, I have to say. Okay. I was excited to see that shoe. Yeah, that shoe looks old school Nike SB just blowing your mind, wild colors on feet. It just looks so... It just... It just it's nuts, man. Yeah, that's a beautiful shoe. Yeah, I mean a lot of execs in the room. You know, John Donahoe was right there. I wasn't gonna run up on him. I felt like a bodyguard probably would have. <laughs> probably yeah, would have tackled absolutely. Me before I made it there. I think it's uh, interesting too because there was that report that came out this past week where John Donahoe blamed the lack of innovation at Nike um, over the past few years for uh, remote work. Yeah, in an interview with CNBC, John Donahoe said, yeah. in hindsight, it turns out it's really hard to do bold, disruptive innovation to develop a boldly disruptive shoe on Zoom. I mean, mm. I I mean, I mean, don't know. I'm not a shoe designer. I can kind of see Time what... Time out. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Joe not, pointing off camera not, to the I'm, Air Force. I'm not a shoe design. designer, but I can imagine maybe where some of the interactive things and the wear testing and all mm. of that goes into tech may be harder to do um, when everyone's virtual yeah. or you're not even in the lab itself yeah. to kind of sample and create these foams and products, uh, et cetera. Some people felt like online I saw a sentiment that this was John Donahoe throwing his workers under the bus for his own shortcomings. Yeah. Yeah, it feels a little bit disingenuous to me. I mean, every sneaker brand was facing that same yeah. thing. It seems too easy to scapegoat the problems on something that you couldn't have really changed because everybody had to work remote at that time. I mean, yeah. also Nike hemorrhaged a lot of design talent in, mm. in the past four years since the pandemic. That's not going to help the brand. And forcing people to go back to work at an office is not necessarily going to help the brand. They're going to lose more design talent that way if it's more restrictive. There are other things it's like... Damned if, it's like one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't, because it's like if people are just totally disconnected forever, then yeah. you yeah. kind of lose a bit of the magic. Or yeah. Not that you're like tracking people's time, but it's like how do you know people are really... Yeah, putting I think, in hundred percent effort on these projects. Yeah, I, I think people that argument, people are kind of split. Some people like the office culture and being yeah. in the office. Some people do not want to be in, in the general, office. In general, beyond Nike, yeah, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think kind of coming out and totally maybe blaming some sort of poor performance on that aspect. Yeah, is what people are going to stick to. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, I think there are a lot of other things you can point to. Maybe it's the aggressive cost cutting. Maybe it's the frequent layoffs. Maybe it's the focus on growing the numbers as much as possible without a real eye on performance. Maybe it's having leadership that doesn't come from the product creation process for the first time ever. We've talked about this a lot, but John Donahoe's predecessors in this role were Mark Parker, who designed shoes at Nike. Bill Perez doesn't count. He was only there for a brief period. and then. Uh, Phil Knight, who co-founded Nike, so maybe this is this is a reason why. And, and I know you you said you you don't accept any Portland slander, but I also saw people just talking online saying, "Hey, Portland really isn't the most attractive city at, for sure. at, at this point for people for to sure. move to." So if you have to be in mm -hmm. office and you're like, "Hey, now you have to live in Portland," yeah, I can imagine people passing that up. And what was interesting as a follow up, so John Donahoe said in a CNBC interview last week, "Hey." Uh, Part of the reason we are lacking in innovation, which everybody can agree that Nike's lacking in innovation right now, is because of this remote work situation. After that, in a statement to the Oregonians, Matt Kish 
Nike co-founder Phil Knight, and you don't get statements from Phil Knight a lot. No. He, he, he expressed his unwavering support for John Donahoe. He said, I have the utmost trust and confidence in his ability. His leadership puts Nike in a position to have a great future, and he has my unwavering support. This is a surprising comment because if you know anything about what's going on inside Nike right now, you know that people believe John Donahoe is on his way out. Yep. People have been waiting for the exit of John Donahoe for a while now. People feel like it should happen. I'm not going to say everybody does, but most of the people I talk to feel like it's time for a leadership change. So it was a bit surprising for Phil Knight to come out and and, and really back him. But I guess maybe that's what you it, have to it's do. It's just a weird like uh, swirl of worlds at one point because i feel like john donahoe's era has really just been defined by pumping out dunks in air jordan ones yeah. just to be like hey you know i guess to like tie it to our world where it's like hey this story really hit on the website let's do ten thousand more of them you know mm -hmm. and then you get like diminishing returns as it goes on and you're like hey we need to change the long-term strategy instead of just milking some sort of you know easy win yeah. uh, that we found but at the same time he does this whole thing talking about innovation lacking from the company at the same week that Nike's doing this big summit thing where they're like, look how good our innovation right. is, but right. then it's not innovation that's actually real. Mm. So it just seems like this false reality that he's created around the brand where it seems more like, and maybe I'm totally wrong, but mm. he wanted to do this to kind of symbolize the, and show the world that he really is doing innovation when in reality a lot of people think he's lacking it. This is pure speculation mm -hmm. from my perspective at this point, but I could see a world in which this whole Olympic reveal was sparked by, hey, people are saying we don't have enough. What can we put out there? What can we do in time for the Olympics? And, and maybe there wasn't enough really exclamation point type product ready in time for the Olympics. So this maybe kind of work in progress AIR type thing gets unveiled there without it being real shoes and because you need, you know, yeah. there's a lot of pressure. It's no, the Olympics. Sure. We got Lunar from the Olympics. We got Flynet from the Olympics. We got all these incredible Nike things from the Olympics over the years. And you, you need that as a sneaker brand. But again, let's just say Nike is competing against itself here. Nobody's talking about Adidas' Olympic shoes. A lot of the conversation around Nike has been about competitors like yep. Hoka and On coming yep. at them. You can't name anything Hoka or On have done around the Olympics. So. Well, I mean, I feel like that's kind of like an unfair comparison because mm. those brands don't have, to my knowledge, Olympic sponsorships. Yeah. So it's like to Nike is the brand that sponsors all these countries. So yeah. to say, hey, Saucony didn't come out with all these crazy Olympic shoes, it was like, well, who does Saucony sponsor in the Olympics? Yeah, I, I just feel like it's the biggest sporting moment globally, right? You can't, But you can't go and create your whole brand strategy to something that doesn't exist as a business opportunity for your company. I want to say one thing, the pandemic era product you were talking about, I actually did talk to Nike's chief innovation officer, John Hoke, about yep. where Nike's at with regards to new product right now. And he said, I think through the pandemic, with all the disruptions of the pandemic, we were serving consumers things they know and love, which is fine, but a part of our job is to take them someplace new to show them things they didn't know were possible. That kind of goes to the dunk Jordan 1 yep. type of thing. Exactly. And then maybe to last week. Yeah, exactly. Like, look, Nike could keep doing that ad infinitum and it would work well for them reasonably, even though some of these silhouettes cool yep. down and saying they're making less Air Force Ones, but I do still think it's commendable to at least try and show people or bring people into the future, even if it's concept cars and it's things we can't actually put on our feet. So do you think it's crazy that you mentioned that briefly, I know we haven't talked about here, that Nike's actually gonna make less Air Force Ones? Yeah, Nike will do this a lot of times of protecting the franchise yep, is what they back call a little it. bit. But yeah. the Air Force One to me was always like either their best selling shoe or one of their best selling shoes. I know there's other like Roshi-esque sneakers that have been at Famous Footwear that have done a ton of numbers for yeah. them. But it's just it just feels like such a cash cow for them. And I feel like maybe it's not really white, black Air Force Ones, but it's all these, uh, I don't even know what the names are, but the Air Force One, and then it's always like some sort of weird uh, number. Yeah, the swoosh is hanging down yeah. a little <laughs> bit on the midsole. Or there's yeah. a double stack on there, an extra yeah. bit of foxing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like th those sort of things are probably what's not moving as quick as the staples. Nike isn't gonna make the Air Force One limited all of a sudden. It's not going to be hard to get a pair of Air Force Ones, although it's funny because somewhere in the pandemic, remember wealthy yeah. friends were reselling yes. white on white Air Force Ones, yes. and it actually was hard to get a pair. But it's more about protecting the shoe as a brand icon and having less 
Air Force Ones in the market that are regularly going on sale and making it look like not as special a shoe because you can go in and buy one of these wonky off-brand versions for but, but $75. Speaking, speaking of Air Force Ones, your mains, Lil Yachty. Yes. Unveiled another PE. Yeah. For his first Coachella set. Concrete Boys? Yeah. Patent leather? It looks like nice. That. I like that. Yeah. Do you feel like it's a little hard for you to get as excited for like PE sneakers that you know aren't going to be available to yeah, the public? Or do you course. still get the same sort of excitement just seeing the shoe? No. I think it's, you look at it, it's like, this is a dope shoe, but yeah, it you know, it doesn't have the same level of excitement like, oh, I could actually own these one day. You might get them, but... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I like those a lot. Me too. It, me too. it reminds yeah, me yeah. of classic Bape. Air yes, Force One which is cool. Yes, that's good. Shiny ass patent I knew, leather. I knew there was something. I was like, what did these remind yeah. me of? That's exactly what Just they that remind whole, me of. Like yes. 2005, 2006 yes. era yeah. of all the patent leather yes. Air Force Ones. And I don't want to speak for Lil Yachty. I don't know him like Joe does, but I have to assume <laughs> that that's the reference point on these shoes. I mean, maybe. And he's he's great at that. He's yeah. great at old reference points. He's like a student of the game. Mm -hmm. So I could definitely see that. You know what it kind of reminds me of? The Chamber of Fears a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I okay. mean, that whole era, you have LeBron those. Air Force yeah. You have those. I was a huge fan of that World Cup pack that they did. There's a Portuguese uh, Air Force One that's like maroon. Mm -hmm. in Brazil yeah. Air Force Ones. Yeah, those were crazy. There was mm -hmm. the Ronaldinho pair of the Brazil Air Force Ones. Ronaldinho was in Paris. I didn't get a chance to Did you put him. in a good word? <laughs> Are you trying to get him on yes. secret shopping? I there was too much going on. But you didn't really answer like the question. I know the question wasn't great. Sorry. Yeah. Like, did you see people attending? Was it like oh big ninety five? Did you see Travis? Uh, yeah, I saw Travis. For Mar I... like any was there any like shoe of the trip that? No, no not really. I okay. mean, honestly, walking around in Paris and and taking in Parisian life as much as I could between the work and the hotel, I, I didn't see a lot of Nike on foot, Okay, honestly. So there, there, there didn't feel like a statement shoe that people were wearing or people were talking about. I, to me, I was more focused on the stuff on display in the previews. There, there wasn't okay. like a shoe that I walked away with like, wow, this was really huge. Or okay. I didn't realize this shoe was that big and, and it looked bigger in Paris. Not really. The Kith Miami trip. Sometimes I always say the it's the the devil's in the details mm. of not what's actually going on but the conversations behind the curtain and i remember the the ecp kith miami trip okay. asics Ooh, taking it back really back but is when i first learned about g dragon got it and that's when i started looking at him wearing the that's when you became a g dragon stand and i remember thinking like you go on some of these trips and it's like, this is like the knowledge. Mm -hmm. I remember we were in the Webster and it was curtains. Uh, I think Rob from On Noir. And they were like, this is the guy who's like changing fashion right now. He like gets everything first. And I was like, you know, who is this guy? And they're like, G-Dragon. And then I reported back to our colleague, Donnie Kwok, and he sent, literally sent the late pass over, <laughs> okay? Sent the late pass over. But yeah, just a quick aside, but yeah. that's what I really love those trips for sometimes. Well, let me add another quick aside on there. There we go. we're talking about Kith locations around the globe. I did set aside some time to stroll into Kith Paris. Oh, did you go to Sedell's? I did not go to Sedell's. Okay. I did go to Kith Treats. I said, I'll take one JLP milkshake. Did, did you? you? Yes. Is this lying hey how did you how no did... i posted a photo of it wait how did wait you where <laughs> i sent the photo to the slack uh, what how... i missed that my sales are getting better i heard <laughs> really too. yes <laughs> maybe because of how do you the, rate the, it? the brendan dunn stimmy how do you rate it not your best work joe wow you really said that publicly haven't you wait what you didn't like the flavors doesn't, i've gotten really good feedback <laughs> wow you had me in the first half wait i did listen I okay went what did you, you like I went and coconut bought... Yeah, maybe the coconut was the coconut is in your in your signature. If you don't like coconut, you're not going to like it. Coconut's my favorite part. <laughs> having got said you that, fired up. having said that, I'm not going to be in the kitchen. You know, I'm not going to mm, be in the kitchen cooking okay. up. But thanks for supporting. Yes. Don't listen to him though. They the spent coconut euros. The on a, coconut on a JLP hits milkshake. Okay. Perfecto. You mentioned <laughs> you mentioned uh, being in Paris, mm -hmm. seeing Arthur Carr. Yeah, mm -hmm. Arthur Carr. Has the Nocta collab? Drake had the dots. got some shoe bars in the in the battle about Kendrick saying yeah. how oh, I, I don't know the line exactly, but it's how the f you big stepping yeah. with a five seven men's on. Yeah. In fact, then breaking breaking news. Then you know who got hit with that bar first though? Who? Uh, our friend conceded. He was in a rap battle 
with what? Uh, with a uh, dumbfounded back in the day on Wild and Out. No, like oh. an actual like yeah. like rap battle, and he clowned him for wearing uh, grade school size shoes. Save some money. Frugal. Six Y. <laughs> Six Y uh. saves money, but. Then Riff LA, let's tell the story. Yes. Riff LA hops in the complex. No, they commented. Yes, they hopped in the comment section and they said, in fact, Kendrick Lamar is more than a size seven men's. The people at Riff LA, a Los Angeles sneaker shop that's been around for a long yes. time, yep. have hooked Kendrick Lamar up on a number of occasions with sneakers and said he's a size eight and a half or nine and has even gotten himself into some nine and a half from time to time. They sent us a bunch of photos of Kendrick Lamar mm -hmm. in sneakers and they can confirm that, sorry, Drake, you were wrong. Kendrick Lamar is, in fact, not a size Wait, seven. Wait, so the bar doesn't... He's so much more of a man than that. Wait, so the bar doesn't hit then, right? Uh, no, it still hits. It still Wait, but you know he's not, not going to give any credit. No, but I'm saying if the if it's like, if your diss is it, not... If so literal, wait, come on. wait, you could have said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> let's let let's 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 call a spade a spade on this because you're. Uh, do you you're, think every rap disc is no? Hold on, let me factual. let me get. Yeah, let's hear it. You're Man, Mr. You, I wish you guys were this excited about Nike's next generation of okay, products. Listen, nothing no, I about. let you cook because I wasn't there. And to be honest, <laughs> let me just say something, please. I was a little quiet. I'm still trying to figure out what was going on yeah, there. Nothing okay, was going on. <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing was going on. Hold, no, hold, hold no, a no. lot of nothing. No, that's not true. Anyways, but I hold on. I need to get this out. <laughs> I was a little quiet mm -hmm. these past 15 minutes. I was on the ground reporting. He was explaining it. I was a little quiet because his reporting on the ground, the Instagrams, and this. I am working towards understanding what, <laughs> what AIR uh, is. Yeah. There's nothing, I thought there's, Wemby had a signature shoe. There's, there's I thought nothing, this one had a signature. There's nothing to understand. Don't that's, say that. That's the end of it. But <laughs> that's the end. <laughs> you didn't even read the press release. You, you could have read the press release. Yeah, Did you read the press I read release? It. There's nothing going Did on. Did you read there. the press release? No. No. There okay. we go. You now even, we got you couldn't some couldn't fire. Do that for the conversation? Now we got some fire. No. Come on, man. I'm going to send it to you after this. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll be totally enlightened by Nike's. Uh, press I'm already in. Listen, I learned a lot in the 20 minutes. Seems I was like, like a, a student just now, like this. Forward. And, and keep going. Anyways, keep going. I know that in the, like usually back to Drake, right? Yes, you're Mr. Super Literal Factual with mostly everything. Mm. Oh wait, hold on. Like mm. what? Kind of like uh, what? Last week? What? Kind of like last week. Hold super on, let's, literal? let's whoa, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not doing all these sides. We got to get to this. The flag. Okay, but okay. <laughs> hold on. Let me just get like get, get your to cars it. off. We're waiting. I haven't had a chance because you interrupted me nine times. Okay. <laughs> you're very factual about getting information right <laughs> on things, and if your bar isn't actually true of what you said, then it doesn't hit. It hit. Can no, I, no. I but if it's just not or, true. Okay. Then it doesn't hit. That's my take on it. That's fine. I think that you're absolutely right that I am a person who's a stickler for the facts and presenting things in the written word exactly as they are. <laughs> but to me, that pertains to our work we do on the website or when we're listening back to this podcast. You don't hold to, everyone to the same standard? A rap battle? You, are you going through people, the bars with fact checks? I, no, not for a, no. a rap battle. But it's it's, hard, it's, it's hard. a rap hard. battle, if you make a joke and you call someone... A, how you claim you're tall when you're five two or something like that, and, then and you find out actually five, five no, four. No, when you find out they're like five eight, <laughs> you're just like okay. Hairs here. Yeah, I don't think being a size nine is like the same as being a size seven. Who do you think's up on the rap battle? Who do you think's the rounds? Like who do you think's winning? I do not think Drake is ahead. Really? No. You don't? No. Why not? Corny? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Drake taking on everyone. You're saying that. I mean, you're cool. saying that because Kendrick Lamar is in fact a size eight and a half or nine, that Drake making fun of him for being a size seven is invalidated. Null and void. Yep. <laughs> My God, <laughs> the hate is insane. It's not. It just doesn't like. It's just not true. I so, can't wait. So this here, I'm gonna peel the curtain back. We're gonna get off this podcast, and I'm definitely bringing this to the bullpen. <laughs> it's just not true. Okay. It's just like it is what it is. But like, you went out there with a joke, but then the joke ended up not being even close to what you like were i mean it's hyperbolic yeah hyperbolic. okay but it just didn't like it just didn't so when jay-z said you little fuck i got money stacks bigger than you do you that's uh, different uh, oh <laughs> hold on wait hold the money on. stacks were you actually bigger than did Prodigy? you measure it but that's different though i feel like that's just like you're using a th the whole thing is a simile right i disagree the whole thing is a simile 
I think so. Okay. I 100% think so. That's a simile. <sighs> you obviously know that someone like uh, saying that like, oh, my money stacks are bigger than you. I mm -hmm. get it. But you're saying you wear a men's size seven and you clearly don't. He got to get the Brannock device out for Kedrick. <laughs> no, me I mean, you. we can do that. As someone, as someone, I use the expert. He is I've the seen, expert. I've seen Kendrick shoes. And you thought those are huge. What a man. In person. As someone who sometimes carries a... <laughs> Spilling the ice all over. <laughs> the energy is here. I'm so glad you guys are energized. No, I, I, I've been energized again. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about that thing it was like when i was looking at the earth science regions in ninth grade took it three times still don't know anything about it but i'm i'm getting there but as someone who i feel sometimes carries the me against the world mentality mm, this is good okay this is good would you agree with that sometimes yeah you know you you know you got me i'm your boy you know but sometimes on x you have a me against the world mentality, which I applaud. Do you applaud Drake taking on all these people? I feel at like once my take on this is we're not here to discuss or like the popularity of rap artists. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's not really that's what not people. Yeah, we're here to talk about WWE and UFC. No, that's not <laughs> this isn't related. But I feel like Drake claiming that like the world is against him because mm. three people or whatever have a attacked him in a rap battle. More than that. A lot. Okay. A handful of people have attacked him in a rap battle, right? Like, go on. What go if on. that happened to you at SneakerCon all of a sudden? <laughs> all I'm saying is that I, I, don't, stage. I don't feel as sorry for someone acting like the whole world is against them when literally you are the most popular, most money accruing mm. rap oh. artist on the planet when in reality the world really isn't against you. Okay. Okay. That's all. Fair. Okay. Can, we get, can we get off Drake? Sure. I want to do a little bit of fact checking. Says as wealthy said, I yep. am always, um, I, I am always responsible only to the facts. There was a, there was a. I, this I'm man ready to was let in go. hotel. Casas I'm ready to let this texting. go. Yes. I'm ready to let this go. I'm not going to make this a bit every single week. But last week, it was appropriate. I asked Paul Litchfield about wearing the Union Jack flag on the Reeboks because he was said he was a proud Irishman. And he said that there's a difference between the Union Jack on the Reeboks and the actual Union Jack. I was looking afterward. I can't find any actual difference. If anybody in the comments can find an actual difference, I challenge you to do so. I, I'll send you a free pair of Reeboks. There. I will never speak of this again. <laughs> Unless it's fitting and there's an Irish guest on here. Okay. Well, Connor's back June 29th. Maybe I'll ask him. <laughs> yes. Finally. Okay? You saw him break out the... Uh, uh, well, obviously, this we better that. be sneaker related. Yes. The Air Force One. Yes. Okay. okay. Of course. Okay. We posted on it. Yeah. He brought out the LV mids. Yes. yes. Welty, can I get your opinion on the latest Devin Booker PE? Those actually look pretty good. Devin Booker. Wow. Yeah. Cortez. That one kind of worked. There was something about the design of that where it's like the Cortez is such a simple shoe yeah. to begin with. And um it just kind of it kind of worked with his model. Like like I said, hey, I have no animus towards Devin Booker or his signature shoes. I just thought that rolling out so many, like we're talking about the little Yachty thing. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to get excited about a shoe that no one's ever going to be able to purchase. And yeah. I just didn't think that that was the right move for Nike to say, Hey, here's and a I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but I want to give you your credit where due. It aligns with your earlier statements in this episode about AIR of seeing shoes that people can't necessarily purchase or experience yeah. in real life. Yeah, but I do think the Cortez, it looks nice. Like yeah. the, what he did, it, it's a nice flip. Like yeah. it, it's cool. And it's also kind of maybe a little unexpected where it's not like the Cortez isn't not one of Nike's biggest shoes, but where first it was like, okay, shattered backboard, uh, Jordan 1 colorways, neon 95s, mm. like where it's like the sneaker head hits, where it's like, okay, you took a Cortez, not a thing that you normally see interpreted into a basketball shoe yes. in doing it, and it went a little bit left field, and it kind of hit a little better than what you thought the home runs would have been. That Forrest Gump colorway of the Cortez may have been the latest or the most recent white sneaker I wore consistently. I remember I wore that. History, wow. Yeah, like maybe... Oh, there, what, there was a moment where you yeah, did I wore them. Those, I, remember really? I, I, wore them. I totally forgot about I wore that. Them. Puma and Cortez. I remember I wore them and I packed them for Mexico for Ronnie's bachelor party, coincidentally. Unforgettable trip. Yeah. Did they get cooked? Yeah, I wanted to cook them. I think Cortez's look great cooked. Let me ask you, though. If Devin Booker 
did a New Balance 1906 book one. Would you like it? <laughs> what? what? We're just, uh, now we're really in the world of fantasy. Yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Not kidding. real shoes. Just, just, <laughs> kidding. Not just real kidding. Just kidding. That, <laughs> that's the furthest <laughs> from a real shoe no, I know. you can imagine. Yeah. Can we talk about the breakdancing shoe a little bit more? The Nike Jam? It's, it looks cool. Yeah. Like, it looks cool. Yeah. Do you break dance? I feel like you could be a break dancer. <laughs> on Mulberry, every, one Sunday, everyone, everyone's at Ruby Rosa or Parm or Ame. He's just in the middle of the street well, with the new. I, I, I just feel like that's a hidden talent you may have. Um, no, my hips are way too stiff to ever be spinning like that. Okay. I do think it's cool that there's a new first ever sport at the Olympics in breaking, yeah. and Nike is stepping up and saying, hey, we're going to put our resources into this and make a shoe that – actually suits this this new purpose granted some of the movements you're going to do in breaking i'm not a break dancer i'll say it again probably overlap a lot with movements in other sports but i think it's a cool challenge in the world of sneakers to say hey we need to make a shoe and put a lot of effort into making a, a top tier world-class athlete shoe for this specific thing although we got to get premium pete to wear test it you think so yeah I, I was saying we need to get Bernie Gross from Extra Butter. Oh, yeah, he's, real, a, he's real, a real break dancer. Oh, you know, then, yeah. If they didn't have him in the NSRL, mm, we why, need to figure that out. We need to, you know. Did you guys get excited about um, the recent release of all the Kobe shoes? I know we never talked about that on the podcast. Which pairs? The Mamba Day, three, the three-pack of shoes. I'm happy people can get them. You know, people like our friend Daryl, who was on here last year, I think yeah. have been I think long said, anticipating I think, I think Kobe fans. I think he said fans. he caught like 100 L's or something like that. Daryl. Oh, wow. We wish you so much more than luck on the next one. But <laughs> if Nike's going to keep making Kobe shoes good and people like the colorways, I don't. I feel like there have been no real misses in there yet. Keep Wait, ramping it up. Can't excite you on the Italian camo Kobe. I sixes. like those. UConn had them way earlier. The national champs, by the way. Where are we going in Italy with those on? Those shoes are really nice. I have to, to me. think about that. <laughs> those. Me and Rudy Calderon were just reminiscing <laughs> on our trip to Italy at the Diodora factory. <laughs> those this shoes. Weekend. Those shoes. The Italian camo <laughs> yeah. out yep. of the three. Those are the one. Those are the ones to me. Yeah. I I really like that shoe. Just that colorway. I love camo shoes to begin with. It yeah. takes me back to the country camo Air Max pack where they did the Italian ninety sevens and the German Air Max ones. I remember French lining 20s. up at twenty one Mercer. I forget which they they there were a, a bunch yeah. of waves of those country camo They're Air Maxes. So good, man. And I remember some Russian kid hopping in front of me in line, and I I did the Arthur meme and just. just did you? I still got it? my shoes. Did you press them? Um, did you go bleep it? What is that? Oh, oh, it's. Do we have to bleep that out? Yes. Okay. No, we'll leave it in. I, I think YouTube will let us live. I go, like the country me, camo. Here. Line is back there. <laughs> I ended up securing the shoes. I feel like I still have those sitting at goat, trying to flip them years later. Pe kids don't care about them. Yeah, but people uh, don't want to pay money for them. I saw because uh, uh, Vanessa Bryant unveiled a new colorway of kobe sixes the white with the black swoosh yeah but she was with friend of the program sabrina unescu mm -hmm. and sabrina was wearing the italian camo sixes and i've said in the past because we when we had her on full size run and i wasn't a fan of the tiffany air force ones yeah. but she made that shoe look pretty awesome and it's not that i wasn't a fan of these but she also made those look oh cool again so maybe nike needs to tap Sabrina Moore to un unveil shoes. Little to, mood board for to you. Give huh? them a little juice. All right. Okay. How are we going to get you in a pair of Kobe's? Yeah. I'd wear them. You would buy that shoe and wear that shoe? I don't think I would buy it. You wouldn't buy it at full price. You wouldn't uh, spend your You know what? It's just it. like to go through, like we said with our friend Daryl trying to get the Kobe shoes. Yeah. They're so hard. And it's like my want to wear them is not really high. But yeah. If I happen to have a pair, awesome but not really on my like list of priorities of things to do i'm a little bit surprised joe are you surprised to hear that if matt wealthy actually had a pair of nike kobe sixes in the italian camo colorway that he would put them on his feet can't imagine him wearing them but i would love to see it <laughs> he's challenging i you. would love to see it okay. this is your moment you know how you always challenge me about yeah. me not wearing specific shoes i, I want, would love to i see want it. you to come on to our next recording I would, would love to see the fit choke them up yeah no, uh, a Bass Pro Shop Digi Camo <laughs> yes. T-shirt, some Buddy Lee uh, shorts. You, I'm, we're going shorts, right? It's gonna be. It's like gonna be 80 degrees outside today. So we're going shorts. Jokes on you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I support you. <laughs> what else do we have? I know we've mentioned this shoe many a times on the podcast, but we have to talk about those tie dye AE ones. Oh, 
Those are amazing. Really dope. You know who they remind me of a little bit? Who am I going to say? Yes, your boy. Yes. <laughs> the, the, a little bit. The, the young man Lorenzo who has OG. all your money. Lorenzo oh, OG. They look very cool. They're for Adidas's premier hoop circuit, which is their version of the EYBL. Mm -hmm. um, that's obviously inspired a lot of very bright shoes because it's for... Nike's eyeball colorways over the years have been really good. Teens, uh, teen, like teen hoop stars. Yeah. Um, or youth hoop stars, uh, either or. But these ones look amazing. That shoe's just so awesome. We're getting Matt Welty in rare form today, hearing him go hard for basketball sneakers. There must be yeah. something in the I, air. It, to me, it's just exciting what Anthony Edwards has been able to do with footwear. I'm Is just he your favorite player. I really don't follow him oh. as an athlete, and I can be honest about that. Yeah. You know, like it, he's electric. I've seen like the highlights, and it's cool. Like I think it's awesome, but I also just think it's exciting in general. If you want to talk about innovation in footwear mm -hmm. and like new things to like have one of the most talked about sneakers this year to be his performance yes. basketball shoe yes. and it's not talking about oh adidas shoes used to suck in the past like that's we've talked about that like 19 times mm -hmm. but it's just the fact that you have a performance basketball shoe that's like the most talked about shoe and it's like okay we're gonna do the top 10 sneakers of the year right mm -hmm. How many times is it just, oh, there's a cool Air Jordan collaboration? Air Jordan. Yep. Yeah. Air and Max it, collab. Okay. And it's cool. Trust me. It's cool that like those shoes are popular. And, and we love those things. And celebrated. But we want to talk about what's the future of innovation mm -hmm. in footwear. What's mm -hmm. things that we can really use? And you have a performance basketball sneaker being this awesome. How can we not celebrate that moment so much more than another retro collaboration. It so rarely happens to that point. So rarely happens. Your first signature sneaker is not only considered widely amazing, but every leak or every debut of the next one is like, oh, this one's amazing. This one's amazing. All hits, no misses. When people saw this one, there was a lot of people saying this is the best this yes. I like the All Star one still the the yeah. most, but those are those are the pretty. Good. You know how it's no, one no, of the oh, hardest. Oh no 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 no! Sorry, I was the thinking eggplant, McDonald's All Star. The eggplant chrome looking. It's one, one yeah. of the hardest things in footwear. Everyone, you know, we're gonna have a guest coming on yeah. in a couple days who I, I can't wait to talk about mm -hmm. this. Just how how hard it is to break through and to have your first signature model you playing amazing, your personality matching up to kind of the most electric person in the league it's a perfect storm for adidas they have to throw everything at anthony edwards they have to keep it going hopefully they're working on number two already I'll, I'll disagree with you a little bit maybe i said this on here before but i think they don't need to throw everything at him in that they should not aim to make a million billion pairs of the next shoe slowly like ramp the one or the two the two yes but like the two Give Listen, them all the resources to make this shoe that's incredible. What, that's all sure, I'm saying, but because don't every, blow it out too big. They don't have, NMD this thing. Exactly, and the gift and the curse is the one is amazing. The two has to, has to be one that hopefully is not as universally loved. I don't know if it's it's possible, yeah. but the next one shouldn't be a big fall off. One of the things too is Anthony Edwards is just so much fun to root for. He's the best. Yeah, he seems he just seems cool. One of the young faces of the league just in everything his interviews are entertaining his on-court play entertaining he the shoes... stirred up the beef with kevin durant come on, nice that was, interview. come on that was fun you know uh he took there was like the team photo that he took a couple weeks ago he's wearing the sneaker politics sambas he, in the photo it just looks he does cool things he yeah. like makes me excited for a it. week ago or two weeks ago dropped 50 in front of 50, 50 cent. Anytime 50 cents okay. is Drop vaguely 50 in related front of 50, to a sneaker, it's enough for Joe LaPuma. They got something with him and the shoe. Listen, it, it's something that like you love to see because I feel like so many signature models come and go. Yeah. And yeah, props props to to Adidas and, and AE. Talking about the next shoe that he has coming, I don't know anything about it. Uh, there, I don't think there's anything about it in the public just yet. But what's exciting to me to think of too is that the Adidas AE1 was designed and arrived mostly before Nate Van Hook could really impact yeah. Adidas's basketball design. But now that the next shoe will come out when Nate Van Hook, who's a veteran Nike designer who's done so many cool projects, uh, Air Easy 2, did some great work with Montclair in the brief stint that he was there. But 
the next Anthony Edwards shoe will release in, in a period when he can really influence it. That's awesome to me too. Also, the AE1, there's like no bad colorways, right? I There's one that I, I feel like I don't, maybe and it's just personal opinion. Yeah. I don't really love the the Timberwolves colorway, which is ironic because that's the team Uniform. colorways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the all blue with the green, that color combo is just not my favorite. Yeah, fair but, enough. But pretty much everything else, the McDonald's shoe was awesome. Yeah. Um, the the kind of throwback to the T Mac uh, mismatch yep. shoe, that's awesome. I think it's the Stormtrooper yeah. colorway. Standard white and black. I've seen people like dye those online. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's funny because there's it feels like there's so much more you can do with the AE one, and I don't know if Adidas will ever take it there, but that tie dye one we're talking about, where yeah. you really that honeycomb upper, there's a lot of designs you could draw into there. I feel like maybe it's hard to do on the manufacturing tip, mm -hmm. but again, maybe we won't get there because maybe the AE two will arrive before it's time, but or maybe they just want to keep it slow and not make a million colorways. But I feel like that shoe has what a lot happens of potential if still. the second design isn't as good as the first. It might not be. It might not be, but it. It just can't be a total brick. It's funny because I feel like one of the reasons why this shoe has been able to flourish so much is just because there was no expectations for it yeah. to begin with. Where yeah. This just kind of took... Every... Eh, it's an Adidas basketball shoe. Yeah, it's my storm. Like, if we had to say what are the most anticipated things that were going to happen in 2023, 2024, yeah. Anthony Edwards get his signature shoe, I don't think anyone would have would have called it. For sure. And the fact that it kind of happened without people expecting it, where it's like, hey, I think people get let down when they have in their mind that something's going to be awesome, yeah. and then it's just okay. Like all uh, the Union Footscape-esque Jordan 1s, where people are like, oh, there's another Union Jordan 1 Whoa, coming out. more Union Jordan 1s. This could be big. Yeah. This could be big. And then it ends up not being what everyone yeah. was kind of hoping it was going to be, but this didn't have any of that and it yeah. just was able to be itself expectations nice and low we've kind of tried to be conservative about these things and we've joked about how sometimes it's too early to say and we might hop on it anyway but can we say this is one of the sneakers of the year i think so i'm gonna put that tester out there and tell us in the comments if we're insane and we'll adjust ourselves accordingly I mean, it, it's so tough and i feel like you know we've gone back and people in the past we've uh kind of appreciated newer models a little bit over retro just mm -hmm. because we're saying hey it's so much harder to make a newer model we wanted to give that some credence in the rankings and i know maybe people will feel more passionate sometimes about the retro shoes because sure. it's it's what they know and love it's the yeah. same thing that john ho quote but it's it's tough to me sometimes to like do apples to apples when it's like the reimagined bread fours mm -hmm. versus the ae1 like cr the, the the product creation of those shoes yeah. is just Two completely different How things. How do you think it stacks up to first signature models of other Adidas athletes? Basketball. It doesn't feel as huge of a moment as Derrick Rose, but I think that that's the closest you can compare it to. Yeah, but I feel like this shoe is just better than the. I don't feel like the mm. Derrick Rose shoes were really all that great okay. at the time. And I remember working in the store selling them, and people came and bought them. Was it about like the T-Mac? Yeah, well, there was a time when I think there was a stat where the D Rose shoe was outselling LeBron, like oh. the first signature shoe. Really? Yeah, and I think it was a it was priced a little bit lower, and the yeah. shoes were super light. But I don't. Uh, same with the AE one, very affordable. Yeah, I just think if you if we can put them both on screen, I think we can all agree that the Anthony Edwards shoe just looks better than the the Derrick Rose sneaker. Yeah, I I know what you mean. We have to wait. It's hard totally. because we're we're a decade plus removed from yeah. the mm -hmm. D Rose's debut. Yeah, I just remember so. that shoe first coming out though, and just being like, "Oh, this shoe's super popular," and just kind of being surprised by it at the time. And I think people were more just hyped on Derrick Rose than they were. There was were. a cool campaign behind it. Yeah. Last thing maybe to talk about, uh, just because popular sneaker stuff. Uh, last week we saw a shock drop of the in the officially uh. officially. Uh. Industrial blue, <laughs> not military officially. Yeah, industrial blue Air Jordan fours. Um, I know a lot of people were like, "Did I? G oh, I caught an L. I caught an L." And everyone's like, "Hey, the shoe's not going to be super easy to get." But yeah. just if you miss out on the first shock drop of a shoe, it's okay because it probably means that there's going to be a lot more releases. It's okay to wait. I, I don't know. I want the early one though. We all do. I yeah, want the early pair. Do. That's why you get a shoe. 
and he puts it up. He has the WWJD. He puts it up. Good, against, so that's the signature. He puts yeah. it up against the wall. Don't act like you don't like getting yeah, early shoes. Come Stop on, it. man. Stop come it. On. We're not letting the Drake dis fact check fly. We're not letting you act like getting shoes a little bit early isn't a great thing for everyone. Just and when no, the general no. public hey, can hey, and look, sneakers offers them look, the chance. What did Michelle all Tanner used to do? Cut Who? it out. If, if Michelle anything, Tanner, if you know, you know. I don't know that. All uh, no, it was it was uh, <laughs> Joey, uh, uh, cousin Joey. Oh, Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave Coulier. <laughs> What Joey. sitcom is this? Full, Full House. House. Come on. Cut it out. We are off the rails. Okay. <laughs> That's um, okay, everyone. Yeah. What, where I was going with that, and I wasn't uh, diminishing people's uh, want to flex early with mm. the shoes. What I'm saying is, is that people get upset because they miss out on a shock drop, but saying, hey, there's going to be plenty of more of these coming out. Yeah. So don't feel discouraged if you didn't get the shoes on the first shock drop, because if you really want them, you're probably going to have a good chance of getting yeah. them later on. That's what I was trying to Listen, okay, okay. say. A, a glimmer of hope. <laughs> hey. Or a guy right there. <laughs> that's what, that's what or, or don't go feel like you have to spend more money over yeah. retail on the yeah, secondary like, market. Oh, crap, your chance I went and coming. spent $573 on a pair of industrial blue. <laughs> not and, military blue. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. That. Definitely not anything nope. to do with the military. Nope. Industrial blue. Air Jordan 4s, you might get a chance to get them retail. There yeah. we go. Let and I feel like, too, when that shoe finally uh, hits its full circulation into the market, there's going to be a chance that you could get them even in the secondary market for not that much yeah. over retail. I did see I did see a pair of those in France. I'll tell you that. How they look? A gentleman, I think his name is Paul, a French guy. Sorry if I got Litchfield? your name wrong. Not Paul, Paul Litchfield was not wearing Jordans. They look good. <laughs> I want a pair. Listen, I'm sorry to do this, but we talk about UFC all the time. We talk about UFC all the time. He doesn't like it. Before we go, this have, time, this time come I do on. like it. Yeah, you do it. No, I, I don't know enough. About okay, it. But I'll, I'll be right there with you. No, yes, that, but also, come on, friend of Complex, Max Holloway, yeah, yeah, yeah. BMF. As we could say, as we could say, hold on, shout out, brother. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yes. Shout to Max Holloway. Yes. What a performance. The last 10 seconds of that fight go down he in said, UFC history. Point, point Put it. it. I do that to him sometimes. Come meet me here. Meet me here. Let's what a performance. Let's bang it out for the yeah. last couple seconds. Max, Max Holloway. Go watch Justin Gaethje. Gaethje, a go tough, watch his full tough size competitor. Run episode. Yes. yes, go watch. Just so you know. Actually, maybe skip the part where I mispronounced where he's from in Hawaii. But Drewski me. <laughs> but... Shouts to Max Holloway. I feel like we talk about UFC all the time. We would be remiss if we don't send him a special shout out. Yes, big up, Max. Yes. All right, everyone. This has been the Complex Sneaker Show. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you next week.